it's important that they understand they're responsible for conducting um, science ethically, that they're doing, they're looking out for the organisms or the people that they're working with, that they're not falsifying results, that they're looking at the information and presenting it in a way that's, that's factual. I'm Kevin Floyd, I'm an ecologist, I'm focusing my research primarily on how humans interact with their environment. For me, environmental ethics is really taking that idea of treating each other with respect and treating each other ethically and expanding that to look at treating the environment ethically. For my, my dissertation research, I was working on lizards and I was investigating the effects that roads have on lizard populations. And so we've probably all seen roadkill. You've seen the poor little bunny on the side of the road. Um, there are roads just about everywhere in not just the US, but in the world. And so more and more people are trying to understand what impacts these roads have on wildlife populations and then use that information to try to reduce the negative impacts. Lizards are really important in the desert. They're an important part of the ecosystem. And so what I was really interested in is are the roads that we're building, does that impact the lizards? And one of the things that I wanted to do was to be able to figure out how many lizards are there near the road versus away from the road. And unfortunately, I cannot look at a lizard and tell them apart from a different lizard. They all look pretty much the same in the same species. And so the way that we mark them is by a process called toe clipping, where we actually clip a toe off of the lizard's feet um, and do that as a way that they now have a unique permanent identifier. That's pretty ethically tough because you are causing pain to that animal. Part of the process of doing this project was going through the Animal Care and Use Committee. So there's actually a governing board that anytime you do research on animals, you have to present what you're doing, why you're doing it, and how you're trying to minimize the discomfort to those animals. So the challenge of balancing the, the need to be able to identify whether or not these roads are impacting the lizards at a population level with the pain that I was causing to individual lizards. I will say one of the things when we release them, you always monitor them, look for signs of pain and distress, and most of the time the lizards just ran off and their toes healed over and every, everything was, was okay, but it's, you know, it's one of those ethical questions that, um, that I've had to struggle with. Everyone needs to be ethical, just sort of point blank, but in terms of students and the importance of their understanding ethics and science, more of the, the scandal side of things, like are you falsifying your data, are you making conclusions that aren't supported by the data, doing the science itself, so are you treating, if you're working with human subjects, are you treating the human subjects um, with respect, are you looking out for their well-being, um, if you're working with animals, are you treating the animals well, are you doing the best that you can to minimize any sort of negative impacts that you're going to have on those animals. It's important that they understand that they are then responsible to do the same thing, that they're responsible for conducting um, science ethically. So my advice on environmental ethics is really do what you can, do the best that you can, and try not to get too overwhelmed with everything else that's going on. So when you have a choice and you're thinking about it, try to make the environmentally ethical choice. Inspire the people around you and you can sort of build a movement that I think we can really, um, as a society, move to a more environmentally friendly, environmentally sustainable world.